This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the quintessential platform for creating your image and expanding your reach across the web. Set yourself apart with a gorgeous website, talk to your fan base, and market anything from your goods, works, and even your time. From 1939 to 1961, the original versions of the iconic DC characters had the center stage. Until the comic publisher recreated and updated some of their roster to reflect the interests of the audiences in the 1960s. I've always found it interesting that while the Golden Age or Earth 2 heroes as they'd later be designated in the multiverse are the first iteration of these icons, but they are not seen as the definitive versions. Ask the average comic reader, and they'll most likely point to the post-crisis variants of Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, etc. as being the end-all be-all interpretations. By that same token, I'd like to share with you guys the story of the overlooked and original Superman. But first, let me take a minute to talk to you about Squarespace. On the site, you can host your own videos. It has unmatched blogging tools to share any experiences you believe are worth putting out there. From photos, videos, and personal stories, it has it all. You can also see the raw numbers, how many people resonate with your stories, and use tools such as keywords and other market strategy methods to get your product seen. And I'm speaking from experience, as I have actually used the service myself to make a website showcasing my personal favorite cryptids. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash crisis, 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. And now, back to the video. Superman's first origin more or less hits all the same notes as what we've all come to learn about the Man of Steel's upbringing. The last son of a dead world, raised by a caring Kansas couple, honing his powers in solitude until the time is right. One diversion from the typical story as it's been defined in modernity is the fact that Clark is initially taken to an orphanage by his future parents, who later on just can't help themselves but to adopt the child. This also happens with an earlier origin of Dick Grayson or the original Robin, so it seems that these early writers considered it taboo for farmers or millionaires to simply take on a wayward child on the spot. From this point on, Clark would live a normal life, as normal as a Kryptonian living on Earth could lead. However, the original Superman wouldn't discover his alien origins until 61 issues into his title. As his powers would develop, and not seeing another way to channel his abilities, the Kent boy would become insistent on going into the circus, much to the dismay of his father in particular. It wasn't until, due to his flying in a circle really fast, that the Superboy Kal-El of the main DC Universe at the time, Earth-1, would meet Earth-2 Clark and show him the true potential of what he could provide to the planet Earth and even universe at large. Superboy would train Clark, introducing him to powers he never knew he had, and even evidently inspiring the costume he'd come to forge later on. Superboy would depart to his home dimension, leaving Clark full of hope for the future. So, despite being created first, it is a later iteration of the character who inspired the original to become his true self. Very weird. Earth 2 Kal-El would mature, where, in time, the elderly couple who raised him would pass away, before the hero would make his debut as Superman, our world's first superhero as we understand them in the present day. From this point forward, as an employee of the Daily Star rather than the Daily Planet, Superman would uphold his dual identity and thwart the evil machinations of iconic villains, including Brainiac, Toy Man, and of course his arch nemesis, Lex Luthor, as well as doing his part to defend the allied powers and freedom worldwide. He was a founding member of the Justice Society of America, the premier super team of this world, and the All-Star Squadron, and stood as arguably the greatest hero in history. Some time after these events, as Lois Lane's suspicion towards her co-worker was at an all-time high, the villains known as Colonel Future and The Wizard worked together to erase Superman once and for all. 
the wizard's spell in truth only purges the Superman persona from Clark Kent's mind, who is still free to pursue his other goals. Kent takes initiative, using the press to combat organized crime in a way never before seen, showing that Clark would be debatably just as much a hero without his powers as he would be with them. This is the man Lois truly falls in love with, and after spending some time as a couple, Clark proposes to Miss Lane, in a way very becoming of a former farm boy. Lois gleefully accepts, later spending their honeymoon in the Bahamas. However, Clark's assault on organized crime has made him a target, with ne'er-do-wells opening fire on the reporter as he swims in the warm sea water. To Lois's surprise, Clark is unharmed and even unaware of his would-be fatal injuries. This causes the female investigator to go into action, eventually tracking the wizard down and convincing him to undo his spell, restoring Superman. The Man of Steel remembers full and well his time and his love for Lois and asks for her hand again, this time being married under the conventions of his home race. Lois is now fully conversant and in love with the hero in totality. Time would pass and eventually Kal-El would learn that he wasn't the last member of his family to survive. Power Girl, the Earth 2 version of Kara Zor-El Supergirl, would arrive on Earth. While both fathers of each would-be superheroes sent both of their children away from the doomed world, Kara's father had a different approach. He would send his daughter on a slower route to Earth, all the while her mind would be stimulated by an artificial reality as she aged in suspended animation meaning she'd have the foundational memories of a Kryptonian upbringing into her early 20s, as opposed to Clark. Power Girl would be found and tutored by Superman before seeking to make a name for herself, where she too would join the Justice Society and form a close bond with Batman's daughter, the Huntress. Power Girl would go on further adventures, meeting Earth-1 Superman and flirting with him, much to his shock. I don't write this stuff. All of these multiversal shenanigans would come to a head in Crisis on Infinite Earths, where among a long course of events, Superman of Earth 2 would aid a cadre of heroes in the battle against the universe devouring Anti-Monitor, even scoring the final blow against the villain's astral form. By the end of this event, Superman, Lois, Superboy Prime, and Alexander Luthor would seal themselves within a pocket reality while the survivors of the Golden Age would become refugees on a new Earth, with their memories and histories being changed to accommodate this burgeoning reality. The Society and even Power Girl would more or less have no memory of ever knowing the Golden Age Superman, with his cousin and debatably surrogate daughter having a totally changed backstory to being a 45,000-year-old Atlantean princess in early post-crisis. It's around this time in the 90s crisis event, Zero Hour, that Kara would become pregnant and give birth to a boy. It's later revealed that the Wizards of Atlantis used the DNA of a demon named Scarabus to the ends of creating the Ultimate Warrior, who rapidly grows to adulthood in one issue's time, kills his demon dad, and fades away to never be seen again. He never shows up after this, but it did happen, and is worth mentioning when discussing the Golden Age Superman's familial legacy. Infinite Crisis would feature the big comeback of Earth 2 Superman, where he leaves his pocket dimension in hopes of restoring his universe, would undo his wife's failing health. He eventually meets up with Power Girl, still unaware of her true origin, which is unlocked after meeting the Golden Age Lois Lane. Power Girl remembers all of her life pre-crisis, and that Atlantean stuff is left in the past moving forward. Lois as well affirms that Power Girl is her and Superman's daughter, as far as they're concerned. The original Superman would meet up with the post-crisis Batman, a version of his best friend, and proposes his idea to restore his seemingly more virtuous and less dark reality over top New Earth, effectively overriding the current planet and its population with that of the prior universe. 
Batman poses one simple question. Is the post-crisis Dick Grayson any less of a good man than his Golden Age counterpart? Superman, regrettably, cannot tell a lie. With that, Batman exposes Superman to kryptonite, which has no effect as it's from a different reality. Batman, when faced with Superman, offering him a very real chance for everyone to live potentially far better lives in a happier universe, values the life of Dick Grayson to such a degree that he rejects this offer. If it means that the good man that is his first son were to be erased in any manner. I'm a big fan. Eventually in this story, Superman gets his way, of sorts, with Earth 2 being recreated with no denizens, however. It is only him and his Lois, who, after reflecting on her wonderful life besides the Man of Tomorrow, dies in Clark's arms, despite his best efforts. Superman is, again, left as the sole survivor of a dead world, and he exudes a scream of pain and agony so profound that it is heard by post-crisis Superman a world away. Golden Age Superman blames post-crisis for Lois Lane's death, as well as the dark state of the DC Universe and the two-do battle, where the man's younger counterpart imparts some wisdom, a kind of repeat of the past. The original Superman has allowed himself to believe that his world was a perfect Earth, a cheesy, campy world where the good guys always win, in contrast to the complicated post-Alan Moore world of often gray morality. What he learns here from the mouth of his new Earth self is that a perfect Earth doesn't need a Superman. In his heartbreak, he gains an understanding and becomes ever resolute. He now knows what he should have fought against all along. Eventually, the two Supermen have a 2v1 against Superboy Prime. In a rage, the latter would gain the upper hand on the original, pummeling him to near death. Prime would be bested by post-crisis, with Power Girl arriving to comfort her adoptive father. In his final moments, he accepts the role of his successor, calling him Superman, viewing him as such. He promises to remain with Kara in death, and finally passes on, his last words being Lois. A new journey for the Man of Steel begins in the great beyond. This wouldn't stop the Black Lantern deity Necron from disturbing the hero's rest, however. As in Blackest Night, both Kal-El and Lois are reanimated as thralls to the embodiment of death. Lois would stalk Ma and Pa Kent before being assaulted by Crypto the Superdog, where Superman would attack the JSA and Power Girl directly. The corpse of Superman would dominate the society's heavy hitters, including Dr. Fate, before being wiped out by Mr. Terrific's anti-Black Lantern bomb, exterminating all lanterns in the vicinity. This wouldn't hinder the hero's legacy, thankfully, as Kara knows full and well that the monster wearing his flesh is not her father. After Flashpoint, a new version of Earth 2, as well as Superman and Power Girl, would be created. While clearly paying homage to the Golden Age, it differs radically in its depiction of the Man of Tomorrow. However, after Dr. Manhattan undid his manipulations of the time stream in Doomsday Clock number 12, we see Kara and the Justice Society at large return as they were in their pre-New 52 iterations, making Power Girl a survivor of at least two multiverse-spanning reboots. And of course, in the event Death Metal, the memories of every individual from across all of their main continuity iterations were restored, meaning the legacy of Earth 2 Superman lives on in the minds of all those who witnessed his heroism or even remember him as they knew him in a past life. With all that said, our story on the original Superman closes. I have a lot of fun making these videos, conveying concepts from comic books or comic book stories, so let me know in the comments if you'd like to maybe hear about the fates of the original versions of Wonder Woman, Nightwing, or any other famous DC characters, or any videos surrounding comic books in general. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.